Welcome back to the final week six of guitar webinar. And so glad that you were able to come along for this uh, ride that we've been going on. And uh, so let's get into it. Um, I got my overlay here and this is from last week. And so we had a couple chord progressions and a couple chords. We had the G and D minor. So let's go over that, and I'm just gonna do it 80. 80 is a pretty good spot. If you could play it at 80, then that's you pretty well, pretty well know it. All right, here we go. Let me turn this up a little bit. One, two, three, four. Ah, I'll try it again. Repeat. the G, E minor, C, D, we talked about last week, the shortcuts, keep your first finger there, move your middle finger, and then keep your middle finger there to go to the C chord, and then you got no shortcuts here, so just, so yeah, you just, that's, that's the one you want to work on the most, probably, is just switching that one back and forth. So let's go to the next one. So E minor, D minor. So the D minor, definitely challenging chord. Let me see, I'll play this at 80 again, because that's our target goal. So. Shortcuts. Although there's a shortcut going from C back to A minor. You just move that ring finger. That's pretty much about it though. Alright, so let's go on to the next one we have from last week, which was the scale pattern. So we had the pentatonic scale and uh, we're talking about alternate pick. So I'm gonna do this at 80 also. Keep it simple. Three, four. So that was your pentatonic scale, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. Um, as you saw in the PDF, there's a number of things, a little different things going on, but um, just trying to cover most of the basics and then a little bit of extra stuff, so let's start with the blues. Then. So that was your pentatonic pattern, which will go great with the blues as we, as we get into playing some blues stuff. So let's go to the finger style from last week and I think about pattern and let me see I think I'll do 60 on this one so the the metronome will be doing quarter notes Let's see if I could do this I just cut my nails two three four Repeat. All right, and as you saw in our new last or six week number six new finger style number three as they call it so let me put that one up there and we got a bunch of fun chords and um, 
Let's see, A minor, D minor, G, C. So we got nice minor sound. D minor. So basically with this one, your thumb is just changing it. And we just have different chords. Um, I think this finger pattern is the same as uh, the first one we did. It's just we're using two different chords. So. Oops. D minor. And stretch the G. And C. So let's try that. I'm going to slow it down. I'll do it at 40. Um, 60 is a good one to do it with the eighth notes. But 40 is probably a good place to start. Let's see if I can do this. Three, four. I'm not going to repeat. I'm just going to go a little bit faster. So I'm going to do it at 60. Just kind of give you an idea how it sounds. It's, it sounds a little different when it's slow like that. But let's go a little bit quicker. Two, three, four. Repeat. Uh, you may have noticed on some of those chords, I just got my f one finger there, and then I put my other fingers down afterwards. So like when I went to the C chord, I went, I didn't have all my fingers down right away. And that'll save you some time in keeping, keeping up. So you don't have to have all your fingers down. It sounds just fine, but naturally we want to put all our fingers down, and then go, of course that slows everything down because we want to stop. Don't stop, just keep going no matter what. So the idea is, is with the right hand, the finger picking is just don't look at the right hand and just work at playing it by feel. And then occasionally, yeah, you're gonna play the wrong string, but um, your best thing to do is just try play it without looking. And, and you wanna visualize your right hand, your fingers playing the strings. That's what I'm doing. All right, so that's finger style number three. So, oh, and don't forget, I do have a special bonus for all of you that stay to the end here. So, um, I remember in the email I sent, or a couple emails, a few emails. Um, anyhow, so let's go to some new chords. We got some seventh chords. So our seventh chord is basically, <clears throat> if you notice with the A and the A7, there's really, look at the top there, the A, and then the A7 is just your first finger off. So basically what you're doing is you're adding, which is the seventh, this is the G of A7. So the chord's got A, C sharp, E, G. It's not going in that order on the guitar. Um, I won't tell you what order it's going in because I have to think about that. So then the D chord is, is the way I look at the D and the D7. So you've got your D and then D7 is kind of like a backwards or a reverse. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're moving the root down to the seventh now. It gives you that sound. It's kind of a with the blues um, with the other chord too. So you got um, D7 and then the E7. So the E7 is basically the E chord, but you take your ring finger off. That now is E7. 
So E E7. So most of these, well, the D7 is really the one you have to kind of switch everything around. Of course, Ds are always difficult. Or you're gonna change your fingers around. But they're used a lot, so you need to know it. Um, so D7, A7, and E7. And let's look at our, we have a, a chord progression. I think that's what I put up here next to. Make sure I, I was in the wrong order last time. Yeah, okay. Double check myself. So um, with those chords, if you're able to go back and forth, maybe you printed them off and you put them side by side. Um, you could put them both on the screen, but then you probably wouldn't see me, which is... Probably okay, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I did here was did the 12 bar blues with those three chords. So you have the A7, and then D7, and then the E7. So basically, the I'll just play it without a metronome, and then um, I'll try it with a track and see how that goes. So it sounds like this. Um, the, the strum is down, up, down. back to A7 twice. And then D7 twice. This is your typical 12 bar blues in A. And then A7 back twice. And one more time. And here's E7. And skip over to D7. Back to A7, and then end up on the E7 at the end. So that's your 12 bar blues. If you count them, that's 12 bars. And that's your typical blues. Um, that's one way of doing a 12 bar blues. There's there's numerous ways. This is the one I, I like and I use. Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can get some audio I do have a track, and if you and if anybody wants a track, just send me an email, and I'll I'll put the track. I'll email it to you or something like that. Um, let's see if I can play it and see if it's loud enough. I hope it's loud enough. Let's go on. Stop that real quick, and uh, so that's basically your your one four five. If somebody says one four five blues, that's basically what that is. A one four five. Briefly, I'll explain it. Um, so one would be your A. So we're in the key of A. So one two three four. So there's my D. So my one chord four, and then basically that's my D. If I go up one more fret, that gives me E. So one, four, five. It's probably the easiest way to see it. And that'll work for any key. So if I did um, blues in the G chord, you know, I would go. So in A is um, what's another key? E would be E to A, and then B seven back to E. So anyhow, so you could play in whatever key you like. I just chose A because those seem to be the easiest chords to start with. And um, plus we got the pentatonic is also in A. We'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, so you get the A, A minor pentatonic playing over that. So let's go um, into the last page there. So here's another extra little special thing, kind of a blues. And it goes with the track. So I will... Uh, See if I can play along with the track, but let me explain what's going on here. So this gets a little challenging because we're we're playing two strings. We're not just playing one string, but two. 
So the idea is, is not to hit all these other strings. So really, if you can mute them out with your left hand, that's great. You could also mute with your right hand too. And that was with the, the exercise. We wanted to be able to mute some of these strings and not um, have them all just ringing out. So, um, yeah, but what I do is instead of choking up like I normally would for like a single string, I pull back just slightly a little bit. I don't know if you can really even see this, but I just pull back a little bit. And so when I strum, I do all down strums. And so that way my pick, and now my pick is pointing upwards. So, and then I rest my hand up above. This is the challenge part, but it's, it's really important. If you, once you get it with your hand on the guitar up above, it makes it easier. Because if you got it off, there's good chances you're playing the wrong strings and all over the place. So if you can keep it on the guitar, that'll really help out. That's the, the key. So when I'm strumming, I'm just, I have my palm here on the guitar itself for the A chord. And then when I go out to my... Did I put finger? I didn't put fingers on there. So, anyways, I'm, I'm using my third finger for the fourth fret. So the zero and two together is is both strings together. Let me explain that. So you got open string and then a two. So zero two together. Do it twice. And I have a rhythm there too. It's 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 a blues rhythm. What they um, it's kind of also call it a swing rhythm. So it's like a bum 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 bum. So when you listen to blues music. Most of the times you hear it, dun, 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 dun. So, and, and of course the track is just like that. Um, so, so your ring finger or your pinky will work for, if you have a hard time reaching out there. Um, I didn't do my ring finger because there's other things I could do. Sometimes you know, might want to add that finger, so. But for this exercise, we're just doing this. So basically, I'm, I'm strumming my first finger twice. And I'm doing this rhythm. The rhythm is just dun, 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 dun. So if you get that rhythm going, that'll help. And then you put your finger down in between. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So my suggestion would be is just practicing that. Just get that. When you can get that, I know I'm playing it fast, but you can play it much slower, it's fine. And then um, see if you could change to the D7 or the D chord. So that sounds like this. And then you just go back and forth between A7 and D7. It's going back and forth. It's just like the chords. When you learn the chords, you just, it's all about repetition. Same thing here. There's repetition of doing over and over. So there is a chord progression. There's an order of, you know, of the 12 bar blues. And um, then mention the last four bars where you got the E, the D, the A, and the E again. That's what they call the turnaround. So, Sometimes the blues songs will start with the turnaround. They'll go. And you do a lick here. So you hear that all the time. They, just, they start the song with the last four bars of the 12 bar blues. And then they just repeat it over and over. It's just the same chords over and over. So the, the great thing about it is once you learn the blues, you could probably jam and play along with other people, and it, even if you guys don't know the same songs together, you could sit down and go, "Oh, uh, hey, you know a blues? Oh, yeah, I know a blues." And so, uh, and you could also there's there's different things. There's the, what they call is I wrote down. This is called a quick change. So when you go from the A to the D in the second bar, that's called a quick change. Sometimes the the blues song may just go four bars of the first chord or the A chord or whatever key you're in. So may just sit there and keep on going, going. And that's fine, that's just another version of, of the blues. I mean, there's there's a major A7 blues, there's also um, minor blues. Um, I would say, you know, something like B.B. King did, did a number of minor blues songs, 
but it's a, it's a still it's still you know you have instead of BB King you know, instead of using major chords you use minor chords it's still one four five it, you just you just do the minor chords so it's got a different sound to it so but um, yeah so let me try this with the track and see if it'll if it'll go um, oh, we got some sound here two three four um. blues jam yeah if you want the track just uh, send me an email I'll send it to you so basically it's two times through so you can do the uh, this a blues and then you can you could do like what I did here and I did the chord progression on top of that um, one other thing you could do with that track so the pentatonic so here let me do a little bit of jamming with the pentatonic and what's great is about with the track you can just kind of create your own melody is really what you're doing so let me give you a little taste with the pentatonic crazy there so um, that's what you can do with the pentatonic and um, obviously um, you know I know what the notes are so I know the A and then D and the E so I'm, I'm going after some of those notes for improvising so that's a quick little uh, tutorial on improvising and um, yeah if anybody wants to get into that just let me know and I'll, I could post some other information on some of that and uh, I think um, I think that covers everything um, I'm gonna miss uh, doing this with you guys, but it's been a, it's been a great learning experience. I appreciate you all that's been here. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate. And um, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. You could always go. You could email me. Um, I do have a, a Facebook page, which you've, I've been posting some of the the webinars there. Um, for those of you that are on Facebook, some are not. And I've been doing some on um, what's the other one? YouTube, and so I'll probably post all these on YouTube, and um, and you know for I know not everyone's on Facebook, anyways. All right, you guys all have a great weekend, and um, I'm gonna enjoy my weekend and uh, stay safe.
And hopefully we get through this real soon and then we can be out playing live, which would be great. Um, but yeah, be safe, take care, and um, hope to see you soon. Take and see you later.